Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Fireside Chat. My name is Shelley Schluter, and we're delighted to have you with us today as we explore the landscape of programmable networks and the opportunities they present for developers. Programmable networks are transforming how we perceive and harness connectivity, opening up a world of possibilities. Through the power of network APIs, developers can tap into telecom networks capabilities, enabling them to craft cutting edge applications and services. Now it's time for me to introduce our two guest speakers. We have Shkumban Hamiti, the head of Nokia's network monetization platform, and Matia Razam, the Vice President of Business Development at InfoBip. They're going to share their insights on the role of network APIs in driving innovation and empowering developers to create new types of use cases. We'll also discuss the recently announced partnership between Nokia and InfoBib, a collaboration that promises to build a one-stop shop for developers who want to integrate network capabilities into their applications seamlessly. So gentlemen, let's get started. Um, Shkumban, I'm going to start with you. What role do programmable networks play in communication service providers' network monetization? Okay, hello, Sally, and have, hello, everyone who is watching us here. Um, uh, it's uh, really great to be here. It's a very hot topic in our industry. I think if you look at uh, uh, what we as an industry we have created uh, in the past uh, uh, 20, 30 years, it is a uh, a, a very complex solution uh, which packs capabilities into networks which have been uh, specified, implemented, deployed by the operators worldwide. Those networks contain capabilities that are very useful for a number of enterprises that are going through the digital transformation as, as we speak. The Programmability of these networks is a means to get those capabilities into the hands of those that actually can make use of, and in that process, make a radical shift for the operators in the way they expose, consume, and consequently monetize their capabilities. A totally new way of monetizing uh, uh, network assets that would be uh, uh, useful for all the ecosystem participants there. So the enterprises which are going through the digital transformation are in a need, and we know that. We know that they need capabilities, but so far the access to those capabilities have been very difficult. Uh, we in the telco industries have often expected them to speak our lingo. Uh, by them, I mean enterprise developers. We have expected them to understand all our 3GBP releases, all our deployment methods. Uh, however, that's something which is uh, clearly not uh, uh, not the correct way of addressing. So now by exposing those in the way that they would, uh, uh, would uh, uh, consume in a significantly easier way, we think would uh, uh, make that radical shift that we all need in the industry. Great. Well. Haven't we done this kind of exposure before? I mean, as of right now, we know that CPAS players, for example, they've had quite a lot of success with exposure. So what are the different capabilities you're talking about exposing here? Yeah, so, so first of all, yes, we have tried this one before. Uh, and uh, as a telco uh, world, uh, telecom industry has been less than successful in monetizing their capabilities. The CPAS players have shown us a way how to actually uh, make it successful. And of course, I'll let uh, my colleague uh, uh, Mattia tell, tell us more about the secret sauce of how to win that. But in our opinion, what, uh, what is uh, of uh, importance going forward for those enterprises that go through the digital transformation, there are other complex capabilities which and very useful capabilities such as quality of service on demand, network insights, device location, device status, and a number of other uh, uh, other capabilities which we know are useful for, for, for them. And uh, that is now available. Now, 
10 years ago, we had an idea. However, the networks were not programmable in that sense. Uh, the technology was not that. And I think now we have the technologies in our hands and we just need to make them available to, to, uh, to those that they need. Was it a difference in the construct of the network itself or is it a difference in the technologies available to access the network? Well, it's a very good question. It could be both, uh, uh, but also there is another aspect to all that that uh, we see now with together with the GSMA uh, uh, Open Gateway Initiative, as well as with Linux Foundation's uh, uh, open source pro project around Camara, we see a concentration of efforts by the telecom operators to make it happen. At least I'm not aware that we have seen anything like that uh, in the past. Uh, 10 years. So that's a very good sign, in my opinion. Okay. Matya, from the CPAS perspective, uh, you know, what's your thoughts on this? Well, uh, first, uh, thank you, Shelly and Shkambin, for opening this uh, very interesting discussion. I actually feel like uh, I am uh, on the uh, opening on some SF movie, basically, when we are talking about uh, uh, possibilities and features of APIs. Uh, I mean, APIs now sound uh, much more interesting than maybe they were like <laughs> a few minutes ago. Uh, but the thing is, I, I agree with Shkombin that uh, uh, when we are talking about APIs, when we are talking about features and programmable uh, types of networks, uh, this is something that is relatively new. Uh, we couldn't do that like 10 years ago because those technologies were not there. But also, the let's say, the request... Uh, f from the user perspective was not there. So, uh, I mean, uh, let's say if you are talking about 20 years ago, we were just discussing, okay, whether we have a coverage on the phone or not. Then maybe 10 years ago, whether we have data coverage or not. Then a couple of years back, what is the speed of that network that we are having? I mean, you need to have certain speed to run certain applications on your phone. Now, when we are, when, when, when let's say this is something normal for us, that we can do whatever we want, uh, stream any kind of movies or uh, uh, or PowerPoint presentations or live meetings like we currently have through our mobile phone network, through our mobile phone, basically, through, through the, uh, let's say, uh, devices that we have in our hands. Now we came to the position where we can actually ask even more. And this more is basically a uh, possibility to use and direct this network uh, in a way that was maybe not imagined before. Uh, so Nokia is coming uh, as a huge telco vendor. I, I mean, as I would say number one authority uh, in this space uh, with the possibility to open those networks and to add some ideas uh, what you can do with, uh, with let's say, features on that network. But I think the most important moment is now uh, on the developers where they will have the access to the networks, but they will be the ones, you know, creating new ideas, creating new projects, creating new products on top of that network. Because network is basically just a network, it's a baseline. We need to build something on top of it. And I'm pretty sure that uh, neither I, neither company knows what's going to happen with that in the next, let's say, one, two, three years. But I'm pretty sure that if we give those guys the opportunity to do something, they will do something amazing. Okay. Uh, the creatives always have the answers, don't they? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> okay. Well, you touched on this a little bit, Shkumban, and I want to ask Matya the same thing. CPaaS has generated quite a robust market, but advanced APIs really haven't. So what's different this time around? Matya? Uh, well yeah, well, if you're talking about CPAS, CPAS started, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 years ago uh, with basically SMS. Uh, and at that time, also, is, it wasn't a great market. It wasn't a huge market, uh, but it was a market uh, which enterprises uh, at that time, probably not so much developers, but mostly enterprises actually uh, recognized as something that is useful to them. Uh, and obviously, we were you know, part of this uh, whole journey and uh, part of the ecosystem, and we were trying to add additional channels, additional features, additional things that can enable those brands, those enterprises uh, to deliver more to their customers and subscribers. Uh, so I think it was probably the right time and the right place to start with this business, which currently is... I would say at its peak, and uh, CPAS is used basically everywhere. And when I'm asked uh, to which companies, to which verticals we're actually selling this uh, solution, uh, for me, it's a very easy answer to everybody. Because everybody who has any kind of subscriber base, who has any kind of customers, 
they need some way to communicate with the customers. And this is what we do. We are basically selling in a way type, different types of communication. On the uh, advanced APIs, the situation is a little bit different because I would say that we are on the very beginning of uh, this, uh, let's say, technology of this uh, uh, Usage use cases that we can offer to the market. Uh, it's starting uh, once we have, let's say, good enough coverage. I wouldn't say full coverage in a sense that every network needs to have it, but if we have good enough coverage, and I'm pretty sure that Nokia is doing a really good job on that one, uh, we will have definitely a need on the market to use that and to monetize it in a better way. Uh, so it took some time to basically uh, enable 5G networks. So we have been talking about 5G, I don't know, for the last 10 years, I would say, but only in the last maybe three, four, not more than that years, that has become a, basically a standard, de facto standard in, in many, uh, you know, advanced markets. So now this is, you know, cherry on the top on the 5G network. So I believe that there is just, you know, a time that needs to pass until some things become very, very relevant. Okay. Stumbin, did you want to build on that? No, just uh, I, I really agree with uh, Matja and the way how he has actually described this one is uh, truly what we see as well happening here. Um, I think uh, I mentioned earlier that the, the CPAS world has shown the way how you can actually make uh, uh, make uh, create value for the uh, entire ecosystem by making it easier for the developers to access certain capabilities. And uh, InfoBip as a leading CPAS players out, out there has the whole experience and, and the ecosystem ecosystem behind that. And that's what uh, uh, I think uh, is uh, showing to, to, to all of us in the telco industry uh, a way of how we can actually expose also other more, more um, complex capabilities that I spoke about earlier. So. Uh, if I can just add to that, so uh, when we started uh, with CPAS, uh, those were quite simple uh, APIs. I mean, not just yeah. APIs, but uh, some of the APIs that were used were actually very simple. Now, I mean, we basically managed to educate the developers, to educate the teams of on the enterprise side mm -hmm. that they can actually create something out of those APIs. Mm -hmm. So adding advanced APIs to that is, I would say, a small step for them, but actually a big step to us because uh, we are creating the whole new market out of it. Yeah. That completely makes sense. And we're so glad that you paved the way. <laughs> so there was a mention earlier of Camara and standardization. Uh, Matia, what do you think of Camara and the GSMA Open Gateway Initiative and their roles in network exposure and monetization? Uh, so basically, I definitely think that uh, we need to have some kind of standardization because this is the only way that we can monetize anything. I mean, you cannot sell a product that works differently in every single region, every single market, every single network, basically. Uh, so that's that's something that will not go for sure. So standardization of that is fine. Uh, however, uh, what I do think is that maybe uh, not just Camara, but any kind of standardization uh, needs to be uh, in touch with the market and try to adjust those standards in a way how the people are perceiving it and how people are using it. Because if something doesn't work, uh, we need to change those things and we need to optimize and uh, improve. And this is something that uh, uh, I think we need to see. I mean, obviously, we are part of the Camara project, uh, Nokia is as well. Uh, and we are always giving some suggestions that we get basically from the market because uh, it's very hard, you know, to envision something five years in advance and be completely right on every single point. Very true. Shkumban, you're the one who had mentioned uh, Kamara and uh, the yeah. Open Gateway Initiative. What do you have to say about it? Yeah, I, I think it's, uh, well, first of all, like, uh, uh, you know, everyone who has been in the telco industry, they know that the telecom industry is really good at, uh, you know, solving problems by creating another standard. <laughs> so we know that we have an old guilty party to that. However, this one here, I see it plays a significantly more powerful role here. As Matthias said, it's not about just the standard there. And I think bringing the ecosystem together, bringing the CSPs behind a set of capabilities that everyone agrees to expose is really important if we want to achieve the victory with the network APIs that we all strive for. So I think that uh, the role of the, the, the Open Gateway Initiative and the Camara is, uh, uh, is uh, essential to make it happen. It's uh, a necessary 
condition, but not a sufficient condition. So. Okay, fair enough. And to add just to that, uh, for, from my perspective, it's very important that uh, Camara uh, is also very much focused on developers. So this is, I think, uh, part of the community, part of the ecosystem, which maybe was not so relevant in the telco space, I would say. I mean, telcos, when they are doing something, they are doing something for the huge enterprise or for the end users which don't have a say you know you you get your phone you get your connectivity and you can do whatever you want with that but uh camara and open gateway were actually you know envisioned in in a way that somebody can do something with that network and this somebody doesn't have to be a big enterprises it can or telco it can actually be you know a single developer who can actually create something out of it do you think that is in part because the developer community has become so robust over time versus when we did this this type of initiative before? There's become such a large developer pool available now. Do you think that's changed things somewhat? Uh, that's probably one of the reasons I would say. Yes, I, I agree with that. Uh, and the developers have become, I would say, important factor in any kind of industry, not just in telco industry. Uh, second thing is that uh, uh, I also think there was a good, um, let's say, example uh, with PSD2, which was basically uh, some kind of regulation on the European uh, level, uh, where uh, basically you, you can access financial transactions also through some kind of different APIs. It's a little bit different story because that's purely regulated on the uh, European Union level. Uh, however, uh, I think it's a very good example how something uh, can become interesting for developers and uh, from for anybody who is developing different products. So this uh, telco should probably copy some of the good things that we have learned there. Okay, yeah. great. Um, so you've both spoken a little bit about how your different businesses complement each other. Uh, can you dig into that a little bit deeper? Why did you choose each other, for example? Shkambin, I'm going to come to you first on this one. Yeah. Well, I, I think, first of all, our, our uh, um, uh, businesses are, are, are complementary in our view. Uh, for Nokia, uh, it was uh, uh, very important to uh, uh, choose a partner which is a leader in the CPAS market. And InfoBip is an undisputed leader there that has the similar vision of where this uh, uh, where the development needs to go uh, and i think we we found a lot of common uh, understanding of the issues that the telco world is facing as uh, uh, we discussed like how do we make as seamless as possible for the developers to to uh, 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 to access uh, net network capabilities on a global level and the third one, uh, also the agility and speed, which is absolutely needed. And we found this by working with InfoBit that was uh, uh, very refreshing and uh, very inspiring. And that's why we, we agreed that we are going to, going to um, uh, strike a partnership uh, for the mutual benefit. Makes a lot of sense. Matya? Yeah, so to add to that, I think, uh, I mean, obviously, uh, Nokia has chosen us as one of the market leaders in this space. Uh, and obviously, we have chosen them because they are the market leaders in this space. And uh, I would say that two market leaders uh, uh, that complement each other uh, can actually create the best product on, on the market. And I'm pretty sure that we will. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Excellent. Um, then I guess... One question is what value, what tangible value does this partnership offer for developers and CSPs? Matya, what's your opinion on that? Uh, so basically what we are adding as a value, uh, we are in a way creating a platform uh, that will enable access to all of them in an easy manner. Uh, so in whichever, let's say part of the world, uh, those guys are working and or, or trying to deliver their services, uh, we will be able to give them access to the networks. Uh, of course, on one side, there is Nokia and the telcos. On the other side, there are developers. I would say that uh, InfoWiz platform is sitting somewhere in between, and we are adding this access to the Nokia's platform and, uh, of course, in the end, to the uh, telco platform. So uh, basically, we are as you said in, in the beginning of the of the this conversation we are paving the way for them to use those apis 
in the most easy manner. So, I mean, some kind of ideal scenario would be that there is just one single API that you can use anywhere in the world. I'm not sure that this is going to happen, but this is, you know, the North Star here. Yes. The yeah. complexity of that is yeah. hard to contemplate. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I think this, uh, if I may add here, uh, Shelley, I think uh, um, it's uh, the, the, the journey to make uh, to remove the friction and barriers for developers to access these capabilities really important. That's what we are uh, here. And eventually we will, uh, uh, you know, make the, the, the barrier to entry very, very low, almost negligible for developers. And that's really what all this partnership is uh, all about at the end of the day. Okay, super. I have one last bonus question for you. Matya, what's the most exciting use case you've seen a developer use your platform for? Uh, you're talking about uh, advanced APIs or in general? In general. Yeah. Ooh, uh, there are so many of them. That's uh, you know pre pretty difficult question to ask. But uh, what I have seen, let's say, uh, recently is that uh, the usage of uh, APIs that, you know, add also some kind of AI part of it uh, are making very interesting, uh, let's say, things on the market and very, very interesting uh, results uh, getting from there. So mm -hmm. let's say there, there was one uh, uh, one product that we made uh, where we have a, basically a chatbot, AI-enabled chatbot, uh, which is used for one of the insurance companies. So uh, if you uh, want to insure your car, for example, you can you know go online and you know use that chatbot. They will give you different, uh, let's say, uh, information that you need, and you can basically buy insurance there. But the, the interesting part is when uh, you, let's say, crash your car, which actually happened, obviously it happens, and uh, so the person who crashed the car, they, you know, contacted our chatbot through this AI and uh, said, okay, you know, this is my car, there is a photo, I crashed my car, what I need to do now? And, of course, chatbot, because it's AI, it says... Oh, congratulations on your crash. Uh, <laughs> so, so now we can help you. Now you can use us. So I'm just saying that, you know, even AI can sometimes be uh, a little bit, let's say, <laughs> problematic, unpredictable, <laughs> at least. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, so okay. yeah, but, but that that was let's say one one of the one of the uh, products that have been awarded uh, with a couple of awards uh, on the let's say Microsoft side because uh, they oh. really think that there was a good usage of AI. Of course, we have let's say uh, changed this in a way so we, we have rectified it. But the thing is that uh, this is the thing. These are the things that can happen with AI. And now, can you imagine if we combine this also with open APIs uh, with let's say uh, if you have some problems on on the on the road uh, where you can actually, I don't know, uh, get some better quality of service on the road through, uh, through these uh, uh, APIs or something similar to that, or enhance your, uh, let's say, uh, bandwidth on the, of the network. There are so many things that you can do with, with uh, uh, advanced APIs. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Shkamban, did you have any example of the most exciting use of advanced APIs that uh, you've seen? Yeah, well, uh, I, I have to say that I'm, I have not had that experience as uh, uh, Matia had with uh, AI, but I had just yesterday one unique experience. So there is this uh, uh, Estonian company, a partner of ours that uh, is uh, called Elmo. They uh, provide technologies for remote driving of vehicles. So there was a vehicle in uh, our uh, Espo campus, Nokia's Espo campus here in Finland. And uh, 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 I got a chance to be driven in the car remotely, I was sitting in the back seat, uh, and then when the the uh, the, the uh, car was uh, uh, reaching a point where uh, the network quality was degrading, then there was a button requesting for high quality of service, and that's quality of service on demand was uh, using an API provided by our platform, and then it. it you know, guaranteed a certain bit rate, and then the car continued going. I was I was a, a passenger there, but then I got the chance also, although in a limited and controlled area, I got to drive it remotely, and that was really exciting as well. So this use case, actually, I I, I got out of there and I said I've seen the future. 
Mm. Remote driving, I'm not talking about <laughs> autonomous driving. Yes, that will probably happen, but remote driving is a, a uh, probably a whole new business that will be enabled by these uh, network capabilities. Oh. Okay. Fantastic. Well, thank you both gentlemen so much. He's very confident in, in his product. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, if you can see where it's going, then remote driving in theory should be uh, a no-brainer, right? Yes. I agree. All right. Thank you both so much for your time today and uh, for our audience. I hope you have learned something about uh, where we are going in this world of APIs and uh, the partnership between Nokia and Infobip. Thank you again and have a great day. Well, thank you, Thanks. Shelley. Thank, thank you, Matya. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye.